Hi, in the 6th entry of our UDK weaponry series, I'll be discussing implementing your custom weapon into the May 2011 version of UDK. This is Ryan Ellis, software developer in Cohort 16, and today is June 5th, 2011. This tutorial assumes you understand setting up a Visual Studio project for Unreal Script. If not, please see the appropriate Guildhall video tutorial. Rather than typing everything line by line, I'm just going to give you a basic overview of what's necessary to get your weapon into UDK. Essentially, you will want to take one of the existing weapons and extend it, or borrow some code from it, to create your own weapon. For the programmers, implementing your custom weapon is divided into three main tasks. First, create a class to define the weapon. Second, create a class to define particle effects for the weapon. And three, create a to define your weapon's projectiles. As you can see, in Visual Studio, I have my game folder, a buzzkill, created with four script files. The first one I'll discuss is weapon buzzkill, the main definition of our weapon. I've extended mine from UT Weapon since I wanted to leverage as much existing technology as possible. I have three vectors here, each representing an offset I'm going to use later. By default, Unreal weapons have a single muzzle. In buzzkill's case, we have three, so some tricky maneuvering is required. I also have a boolean to indicate whether we're shooting from the left or the right barrel of the primary portion of our weapon. The first thing you will want to edit in any weapon are the default properties. These will vary depending on which class you're derived from. So here I've modified the weapon's position on screen. You can make your player left or right handed or just shoot from the middle. Most importantly, your gun needs to have its ammo and max ammo count set. In our case, ours is over 9,000. Next, the firing interval. I have two specified here. The first is the primary weapon fire rate, and the second is the firing rate in alternate mode. Next are the offsets for the gun's muzzle positions. This isn't normally something you have to do, but I do this because our gun has logic for making the projectiles shoot from the muzzles rather than the center of the screen, which is Unreal's default. The next couple of sections tell Unreal what meshes to use for the first person view and for the third person view, uh, or the pickup view, what you see when the gun is lying on the ground ready for swiping. Next, you tell Unreal which projectiles to use, and you want to do this for each firing mode. In our case, we didn't create new projectiles for the primary fire. We're just using the link gun for our primary, and our buzzkill rocket for the alternate fire. The next section sets the weapon sounds. We're using the link gun sounds, except I like Star Wars blasters better for firing. We're using the rocket firing sound for alternate fire. Next, specify which particle effects you're going to be using for the muzzles, for muzzle flashes, smoke, etc. And finally, we're setting the crosshairs here, which specifies the texture and the coordinates for the crosshair. So that does it for the properties of the weapon. There are more you can modify depending on your needs, but you can check out utweapon.uc. Next, I've liberated some code from the ut content backslash utwep shock rifle class, which will cause the projectile to start at the end of the weapon instead of the center of the screen. I've added some custom code located here to change which muzzle to fire from, depending on whether you are firing from the primary or alternate or the rocket location. Our last method here is an overloaded function from UT Weapon that I per so that I purposely detach the muzzle flash socket before firing. That's done with one line here. The reason for this is because again we have three muzzles and Unreal will only use, will only uh, detach the weapon if you've swapped weapons and you fire the first time. Our next file is the weapon attachment. 
The UDK documentation states that this defines the particle systems used in third-person view. However, this is only half true. This controls what effects, if any, you use in both first and third person. You will usually want to derive your class from UT weapon attachment. Like most classes, the first thing we've modified are the default properties. This is the mesh used when viewing in a third person view, that is how you view others and they view you. And then we've modified the particle effects, or set the particle effects, used in the muzzle flash socket when a projectile is fired. This class is normally very simple, but you can also modify the behaviors of the effects. In our case, I've modified the first person fire effects slightly so that we switch which muzzle displays the flash when firing. And then it performs its normal usual logic. The next file is the weapon projectile. You will normally want to extend from UT projectile. In our case, we're using the rocket from the rocket launcher, so I'm just extending the UT proj rocket class. In the default properties, I've quadrupled the momentum, which is transferred to targets, so now we can get some cool rocket jumps in. I've also replaced the sound when the rocket explodes. This will become very obvious during gameplay. Everything else is pretty much the default from the rocket class. The remaining changes I've made simply cause our explosion to only be directed forward. This will increase the power of our rocket jumps, and I've done the same thing in the projectile hurt radius. The final class, which you will need for any Unreal game you make, is the game class. In our case, we've derived from UT Deathmatch, since that includes the control scheme that we are familiar with. The only thing of importance is this line. This is where we set the custom weapon to be the default one that all the players start with. Now that that is all complete, we can compile and run to see our results. Be sure to examine the particle, particle effects near the gun's muzzles and listen for the rocket explosions. I'm Ryan Ellis. We're done here.